symbolically the cam the candles lit. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you all for doing that. Our scripture reading today is going to be from Luke 15. It's going to be verses 11 through 13. If you'll please hear the word of the Lord. And he said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that falls to me. And he divided his living between them. Not, not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had, and he took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in loose living. It's the words of the Lord. Now, one of my joys in life is, is trail riding. That's, that's biking, um, just to clarify that. I, I, was, I grew up in, in Boy Scouts uh, most of my life, all the way through, through high school. I'm an Eagle Scout. Um, that was just one of the things our troop did. I always found that different Boy Scout troops did different things. You know, one troop might be like the ones who always go to Philmont and always are outdoor camping. One might be backpacking. Our thing was, was biking. That's just what we did as a troop. And one of our, my favorite places to go was Fort Stanton, New Mexico. Um, there's a lot of hills, a lot of valleys, just a, a great place to go biking on these trails. Um, and I, that was just it was one of my favorite things to do as I was growing up in scouting. You know, there, there was nothing like looking out over, over a trail, just a, a deserted trail, and it's just you, maybe a few of your buddies, and you, just, you can just soar. Sometimes it's downhill, so you, you don't even have to do anything. You can just be lazy, you just cruise it the whole time. And I always looked forward to seeing what was at the end of that trail. It was, it was, was it a home base? Was it our, our camp at the end? Was it going to be, uh, there was an airport nearby? Was it going to be the airport, or was that another mile ahead? It didn't matter, but I was always looking forward to the end of that trail. There's something about roads. There's something about trails, you know, traveling. You know, I, I don't mind traveling at all. I, I actually like road tripping for the most part. Um, this weekend, however, or this week, rather, kind of did me in. We went to Oklahoma um, to spend time with Caitlin's family, and uh, we, we had a long trip yesterday with all that weather. We, we were in the car, I think, from like 10 o'clock to about was it 8.45, Caitlin, something like that, like about 8.45, and we were just like white knuckling it the whole time because all the ice on the road, it was the longest trip, and that kind of did me in as far as road trips go, but I, I just remember um, this past week, we, we had the privilege of having my mother-in-law fly into the States, and for those of you guys who don't know, my in-laws live overseas, uh, they work on the military bases, they're, they're teachers, principals, um, all that stuff, and so um, she got to come spend Thanksgiving with us, so that, that was a treat, so we loaded up the car, we headed to Oklahoma. Uh, we, had, we had a great time, but I remember as we were leaving, um, I remember uh, seeing my mother-in-law, and she, she just got really sad, just very, very calm, as you can imagine. Uh, she doesn't get to see us very often, and I just remember her standing at the door um, and just, just peering out at us and w wasn't going to leave that door until she saw that we were, like, way out of sight. Um, and I know she always anticipates us coming back or us getting to see her again, whether it's us flying overseas or her coming back over here. So we headed off again. We're white-knuckling white it the whole way. We're, we're trying to get home. And I just remember getting between that stretch of, of Plainview and Lubbock. And that's like home stretch. If y'all know what I mean, you've been on a long road trip and it's just like that last 45 minutes and you're like, oh my goodness, you know. And so you're, we're just driving along. We're, we're just like, get out of the way. Everyone else is passing us and we're, you know, we're racing down the road to get, to get home and everything. And, and finally we see it. Now, it might not be grand, not, might not be a, a spectacle to you, but we saw Lubbock, Texas, and it was a joy in our hearts. We love, we love Lubbock, we love our home here, but it was great to await what was, seeing what was on the other side of that road, from the start in Oklahoma all the way down, and on the other side was Lubbock, and it was, it was just a joy to see that. So that was our Thanksgiving holiday, but I, right now I want to recap a little bit uh, the, the past three weeks of, of what Paul's been talking about. He's been talking about the, the prodigal son story. Um, he hasn't been titling it that exactly, but there was three stories that he worked on. The first one was the squanderer, that was the younger brother, the one, the wasteful one, right? The second one was the loving father, his, maybe his view, the narrative there, and the third one was the older brother, all right? So... 
in looking at those, I want to give you a, just a Sparks Notes version of that story real quick for those of you guys who might have missed the past three weeks. Basically, the prodigal story, uh, story goes something like this. There was a loving father. He had two sons. The younger of the sons came up to him and basically said, Dad, um, I, I just want my share of my inheritance. For some reason, the dad was like, okay. And so he divided it up between his sons. Son took all his stuff and he headed out, headed to a far away country. Now there he squandered it, he wasted it with, with lavish living and everything um, to the point where he, he ran out of his inheritance. Then a famine came through the land and he was forced, the only job he could find, he was forced to feed and live among uh, uh, pigs. And that's a horrible thing for, for a Jewish uh, person to live. Swine was just not, it was, it was a dirty animal to Jewish, the, the Jewish uh, people. And so he, he had this thought, he said, you know what, my... My, the servants in my father's household have it better than I do. I'll go back to my father. I'll tell him, I'm not worthy to be called your son, um, but if you'll have me back, I'll, I'll, I'll just be a servant, okay? And so he takes this long journey back home, probably rehearsing the whole time that he was going. And while he was still distance a ways off, his father saw him. And instead of waiting with his arms crossed and saying, mm-hmm, boy, I always knew you would come back, He instead ran towards his son. He embraced him. And again, the the son starts reciting probably what he's been reciting the whole time. Father, I'm I'm sorry, I've done this. Um, Count me as a slave in your household if you'll have me back. And the father's like, hold on, hold on, wait. Bring him my robe. Here, put my ring on his finger. Let's have a feast, a grand feast. For this son of mine was lost, and now he's found. He was dead, and now he's alive. So that's the Spark Notes version real quickly over what we've been going through through the past three weeks. But today, I have another story for you that I'd like to share. It goes something a little bit like this. You see, there was a loving father. This loving father, he had a lot of sons and daughters. Many, most, were very rebellious. These sons, these daughters, eventually fled away, leaving the father, leaving his home. They went away to a far away country. However, the father, he also had a son who was always totally obedient to him. This this son, he was in perfect community with the father. He loved his father. This son was even to inherit all that the father had to give one day. However, the loving father still loved the rest of his children. He had a deep desire to be in community with all of his children. Attempt after attempt happened to reach out to his children. and Nothing really worked too well. Thus, he decided to ask the unthinkable. He approached his obedient son. And he, he put a task on him. This son was to go away to this far country to where his brothers and sisters, the, the sons and daughters of the father were. And he was to love them. He was to tell them that, hey, the father still really loves you. Even though you've done all this, the father still loves you. He, how, how the father desired with all his heart to have them back home in community with him. Now, in order to do this, the obedient son would have to leave his position. The love, security, the perfect community with his father in order to take this journey. He would have to hang around the worst of worst. Prostitutes, tax collectors, thieves, liars, murderers. Hypocrites, gossips, adulterers, etc., etc. So the son thought about it. To everyone's surprise, he decided to totally humble himself. And he agreed to do it. He agreed to do it out of the total obedience to his loving father. So the son went. He got to this faraway country, and and among the father's children, he dwelt with his siblings. He loved them. He told them, hey, the, the father still loves you. You know, some believed. Others didn't. 
And some, out of their disbelief, drove themselves towards a desire to even kill this obedient son. And yet the son carried on, full obedience to the father. He did this to the fullest extent of giving up literally everything possible he could. And after, you know, it was finished, the obedient son returned home to be embraced by the loving father. In the father's extreme love for the obedient son, he brought him his, his best robe. He put his ring on his finger. He said, you know, everything I own is, is now under your authority. And they had a huge celebration. For the loving father said, we celebrate for the son of mine was dead. And now he's alive. Thus, the obedient son, he still received his inheritance. And seeing that it was of a vast, great amount he decided to share his inheritance with all of his siblings that would return as well to the father. The way of the son into a far away country. Spoiler alert. uh, If you didn't catch on to it, the story almost mimics the career of Christ himself. In fact, I would say it was the career of Christ, the life that he led. And as you probably can already guess, it alludes to a well, the well-known story that we sparked notes to earlier, the prodigal son story. Although that parable is mostly about the sin of mankind and their need to repent before the Father. You see, a man, a man named Karl Barth, he reinterpreted it to, to mimic the journey of Jesus Christ. He believed that the Christology of Jesus mimicked this story in some way. However, disclaimer, okay, it definitely would be stretching it to draw a simple conclusion that that Jesus and the squanderer are the same person. Obviously not. Obviously the squanderer left out of unrighteousness, rebellion. Jesus, however, out of obedience. Obedience to the Father. However, the moment of leaving, the movement rather, of leaving and returning, I think is very similar in these two stories. I mean, think about it. Who other than Jesus can say that they truly were dead and now they are alive, right? He's kind of got that on us. So, the Son of Man has done some type of a similar journey of going to a far away country of human corruption and sin. So I suggest instead that Jesus, again, is not the squanderer, but he instead is one who sets out to fulfill. One who traces the footsteps of the, of the squanderer in order to reconcile mankind to the living Father. You know, we, we love to call this story in Luke, this parable, we love to call it the prodigal son. But what, what does that word really mean? Check this out. You know, if we were to define it as it's prescribed to the parable in Luke 15, it means something like this. You can get this in in any dictionary. It's spending money or resources freely and recklessly, you know, wastefully extravagant. I think that falls in line to the parable of the prodigal son. He's very wasteful. He was spending money freely, and he wasted all of his inheritance. However... Are you aware that there's also another definition for this word? The other definition for for prodigal, it says something like this. Having or giving on a lavish scale. Based on that definition, and looking at the actions of Jesus, I would suggest that he truly was prodigal in nature. And, and didn't Jesus, I mean, based, again, on this other definition, give on the most grand and lavish scale? Jesus undertook this journey, knowing he knew, he, uh, 
knowing he, he was in all majesty, all sufficiency, all fully and totally God, one in the Trinity, knowing that, he still took this journey. You see, the prodigal nature of Christ, the prodigal nature of Jesus in the story that he fulfills is that God did not just simply dip his toe into humanity. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Instead, he in all things gave up his splendor and his glory in perfect, loving community to dwell among an imperfect community. He transcended from one who was outside of time and he entered fully and totally into history to alter the course of history and to work redemption in and through history. Then he carried out the call of total obedience to the Father, to the fullness of, of death on a cross. And then he rose. He then returned to the Father, and now he unsparingly lavishes us with his inheritance, the unfair inheritance of grace. Prodigal. That, my friends, is prodigal. And that is why I would say that Jesus, in the nature in which he came, truly was a prodigal son. So, where does that leave us today? We, we've started the season of Advent. The season where we, as the body of Christ, we remember the story. We start remember, we start piecing it back together. Friends, this is a season where we have the privilege to symbolically remember that prodigal journey taken by Jesus out of the obedience of the Father. We anticipate the arrival of the obedient Son. The one who it was foretold. The one that was foretold by Isaiah the one who was foretold by John the Baptist, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That same Jesus, that son, is on the road right now. The one who, who because of the, the lavishing, the, the great gift, the great inheritance that he has had, has put everything on an even playing field. Every one on an even playing field. That is whom we are awaiting. So, what will it be? During this season of Advent, which story will we choose to mimic? You see, I, I think we have two options. Looking back at the prodigal son, we, that story, we have the option to be like the squanderer. A people who choose initially to waste this season. The ones who say, oh man, it's December 26th already? I've done that many times. Who allow the, the busyness of the season to keep our focus away from this symbolic journey of Jesus, the Son of Man, the Son of God coming along that trail. Or we can choose to be like the loving Father. We can choose to be focused attentive, capturing every moment of the season as we await the coming of the obedient son. That could be our choice. Either way, the choice will be yours. You know, either way, the, the generous, prodigal son of God, he's on the road. You know, it's kind of like that story I started out with. Again, I love being on trails. I love seeing what's at the end of the destination. I, I, I love spending holidays with family. And I know my mother-in-law does too. 
So during that trip that we had, we were buffered by two good things. We had Lubbock on one side, and we had family on the other. Either direction, whether we needed to turn back around because of the ice, or whether we, need, we kept on going like we did and came to Lubbock, either way, somebody or something was awaiting for us. My friends, I pray we, we take upon us the same nature. We are the ones anxious and excited during the season, waiting to see what is at the end of that trail. And I hope we do it as a family, as one, as those who come under the banner of Jesus Christ. Because, my friends, the obedient son, he's coming. Let's pray. Father God, we, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for, for all the many blessings that you give to us. We thank you for the, the unfair inheritance that we get to receive because of Jesus, God. That's, it's crazy. We thank you for grace. And God, we also thank you for this season when we can point our vision back to you, God. When we can remember as one, as a community, as followers of you, what you truly have done, how you've entered into history. God, we thank you for, for all the many blessings that you've given us, God, especially over this past week, getting to, to see family for Thanksgiving, getting plenty of food. Lord, we thank you so much for that. Lord, at this time, I pray that, that the rest of our worship service will be a blessing unto you. It's in your son's most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite our elders and deacons forward.